You are looking live at Citizens Bank Park in downtown Philadelphia, where the center of the baseball universe is this matchup between the Braves and the Fighting Phils. Atlanta tried to hold off the Phillies. They're only a game ahead of them in the National League Eastern Division race. Hi again, friends. Joe and Chip. Hopefully we'll have some fun. Last time the Braves won a road game was right here in Philadelphia back on August 2nd. Needless to say, Joe, 2015 for both of these clubs has been a very difficult season to endure. Well, if they want to get rid of that road trip jinx, then this is the right place. They've been hot here. But for the Atlanta Braves, they're facing a ball club that actually has played pretty well since the All-Star break. The Phillies actually have a winning record. So when you look at the matchups between the two teams, Braves with a 7-6 and six record overall on the year. But here are their numbers. The Phillies have out-homered them. Barely over the Braves' number of 3.6 runs per game. Braves have a little bit better edge on the ERA. So two evenly matched clubs going at it here for the next three days as they battle to stay out of the cellar. Should be a hard-fought battle these next three days here at Citizens Bank Park. It's the Braves, it's the Fightins. We'll see if the Braves can out-fanatic the fanatic. We'll find out right after the break. Aaron Harang and the Phillies are ready to go in game one of this series between the Fighting Phils and the Atlanta Braves. Phillies at 53 and 84, last place in the National League East. Braves a game ahead of them with 54 wins, and Aaron Harang and Shelby Miller have a lot in common, do they not? Yeah, lack of run support and some real rough times for his last 15 starts. He started well for the Phillies, just like he did for the Braves last year. Then he had some plantar fasciitis issues. Has not pitched well really since he came back from that, but his last 15 starts 1 and 11 before you get too fired up. That one win was against the Braves. He's 2 and 0 against Atlanta this year with an 0.95 ERA in three starts. Needless to say, the Braves were delighted to get out of Washington, D.C. after the Nationals greeted us and treated us so rudely at Nationals Park. 
And the Braves come into town six and seven this year against the Phillies, two and five here at Citizens Bank Ballpark, and hopeful of snapping a season high 12 game losing streak. And Freddie Gonzalez and the Bravos have Nick Marcakis ready to lead things off at the top of the batting order. Marcakis, Oliveira, Freeman. Good to see Hector back in the starting lineup after fouling a ball off his foot the other day. Oliveira will be at third base. Freddie Freeman always hits the ball well in this ballpark, including his first home run. His 100th home run came against the Phillies. Hopefully we'll see a few more long balls for the Atlanta club against this Phillies team that I think it's safe to say at this point hits the ball a little better than the Braves do. And I something that has to change the way that Aaron Harang has been pitching for the fight. As our old pal Doug Eddings is behind the plate. Still no Harang. He made a very long trek and strolled in from the bullpen. And it looks like we're going to have a momentary delay here. And here is why we call Doug Eddings our old pal. Yeah, he's uh, he's quick to go off the deep end. These are some pitches that could have all been called strikes in Chicago. Nothing on the inside, so Mike Boltonevich went away. Didn't get that call, and then Eddings heard about it from the dugout. And the quick fuse, the quick ejection, something we've seen a lot from Doug Eddings. But he had a nice tonight. But a nice amiable chat with Freddie Gonzalez, explaining why we're delayed for just a couple of moments. Now Harang makes his way to the mound. And begins his warm up tosses, and there is Nick Marcakis, and there is the Braves Academy Sports and Outdoors starting lineup. Oliveira bats second between Marcakis and Freddie Freeman. A.J. Brzezinski once again starting for the Braves behind the plate and cleaning up. Nick Swisher's in left. Peterson Simmons, Michael Board in center. Still no Cameron Maven and Williams Perez. A.J.'s in there because the Braves are trying to snap out of a long losing streak, a long road losing streak, and a rough last three weeks. So you want your best group out there as Freddie says for a chance to win. Different look to the Phillies defense. We'll get our first look at uh, young Darnell Sweeney he came over from the Dodgers in the Chase Utley deal. He's in left. Aaron Altair is their right fielder. We haven't seen him. A couple of new faces for the Phillies. You know about Freddie Galvis one of the most underrated shortstops in the National League. A terrific player. You don't always have to worry about Ryan Howard who kills the Braves at the plate. First time the Braves will play a Phillies team that does not have Chase Utley on their squad since 2002. It is a different feel to it when you look at the Phillies club knowing Chase Utley's not lurking somewhere either in the lineup or on their bench. I'm not sure why both pitchers were late coming out of the bullpen. Williams Perez just now hustling off the field along with AJ. It's like both guys started late somehow. Did they think it was a 7 10 start? Perhaps? Could, have, could have been. And that's about when we will start a few minutes late. But Aaron Harang's ready to go. Roger McDowell's making his way down the warning track near the stands. And we are at last underway in game one in Philly. Marquecos skies it out of play foul, strike one. Nick just three for 15 in Washington, but he continues to swing the bat well. He's still right around 300 as he has been all year long. Two hit game yesterday. Warm night in Philly, 89 degrees, not much wind to speak of. So maybe hot weather will heat up the Braves' bats. Make it 295 for the year. Playing in his 1500th big league game tonight. Nice milestone from Arcacus. And he's ahead in the count. Two balls at a strike. If you don't remember Harang from pitching for the Braves last year, he went 12 and 12 for Atlanta. Lined over short, a base hit. And Marcakis is on his way to second. Herrera momentary bobble. Throw is late, and it doubles to start the game. Just out of reach of Freddie Galvis at short, and Nick Marcakis has his 32nd double. Second game in a row, he's let off with a double. Yesterday, it seemed like it was going to be for naught until Nick Swisher came through with a two out single to drive him in. Hopefully tonight a little better ABC baseball make it easier to get him in. Harang 88 to 91 and his fastball cuts it a lot to lefties slider and a changeup. 
Good sinking action on it too. He has always pitched tough against the Braves. You look at his season numbers and you think, okay, he got a real good chance to beat him. Then you look at his head to head numbers against Atlanta and you think, uh oh, might be a tough night. Rang's given up two earned runs in 19 innings pitched against the Braves. And now Oliveira, the batter. And Q's one out of play foul. It's nothing and too quickly. Hector couldn't answer the bell yesterday. He fouled a ball off his foot two days ago. They'll try to move Marcakis over or in here in the first inning. Oliveira just two for 15 since he joined the ball club, but he's driven in three runs. Those are all in one game. He swung and missed that pitch, and Harang struck him out. So Oliveira can't advance Marcakis. Ball in the dirt takes care of the Braves third baseman, and here's Freddie Freeman. Freddie Freeman has feasted on Philly pitching. He's hitting 341 against their staff this year. He's hit a couple of home runs. And that's outside. One ball, no strikes. Yeah, it's kind of like Washington. His last eight against the Phillies is kind of the same story. Two homers, eight driven in, five multi hit games. Hopefully, more the same in this series. In the air toward left. That ball's got a chance. That ball is gone. Freddie Freeman hits an opposite field home run. And a lightning strike for Atlanta. It's 2 0 in the top of the first. Well, that got out of here in a hurry, didn't it? Fastball. Tailing away, Freddie is right on it. Great start to the ball game. First home run by the Braves in 231 at bats, covering seven plus games. And the 84th homer hit by the Atlanta Club this year. Two nothing, one out, and AJ Przinsky the batter. Told you Freddie likes to hit against the Phillies. And now AJ hits one of the air toward right. Altair drifts back onto the warning track and a couple of steps shy of the wall makes the grab. Two outs. First home run allowed by Aaron Harang. And the 19th he's allowed in his last 14 games in one inning. But Harang is doing what the Phillies hoped he would do in this regard. He's pitching lots of innings for them. He did miss a month, as you mentioned, with that plantar fasciitis problem. 44 innings for Harang in 25 starts. Quickly 0 and 2 for Nick Swisher. He's had a good run at the plate for Atlanta. And hitting 279 for the year. Aaron's last start, he got taken off the hook by his teammates. He actually Came back to beat the Mets. He gave up five or four runs in four and two thirds innings. Got a no decision. Phillies won 14 to eight.
That's over the inside corner. Harang earns his second strikeout. But a double and a two run opposite field homer for Freddie Freeman gives Williams Perez a very rare lead. It's 2 0, and he'll go to work next in Philly. Low price every day. Beautiful day in Philadelphia. The Braves off to a nice start. Freddie Freeman has hit a home run. And now center stage is Williams Perez. It's been a long frustrating run for the young Braves right hander. Road starts is eight road starts on the year. A better ERA than at Turner Field and a lower batting average. Hopefully that will be something that's uh, key for him tonight. Speaking of keys the Ford keys to pitching success tonight. He's gotten off to some rough starts and bad first innings tonight. Just take it one inning at a time. Pitch well this inning. Go to the next and the other one start on number 32 his first 31 pitches. We've talked a lot about that have been awful in terms of batting average against. He just started with his 32nd pitch of the game. First 30 pitches opponents hitting 370 against Perez after that 249. And to your point about early inning troubles. 14 first inning runs allowed by Perez this year. He's got a two run lead, and Cesar Hernandez leads off and smokes one up the middle. It's a base hit for Cesar Hernandez, who now has an eight game hitting streak. And if memory serves, Hernandez, Herrera, and Freddie Galvis have torn up the Braves pitching staff this year. Well, Hernandez hitting 381 on the year, Galvis hitting 427 at the top and bottom of the order. And look at AJ. You know, it, it, the recurring pattern here is 2 and 0 oh count, pitch down the middle. 3 and 1 count, pitch down the middle. That has been the recurring theme for these young guys who have not been able to make pitches when they're behind in the count. Odubel Herrera is hitting 302 this year. He's hitting 367 in his last 54 games. And he hits a ground ball to second. There's one, and there's two. Perez might have broken his bat, and a double Herrera's doubled up. Base is empty, and two out. That helps. And here's the Braves' defense. Hopefully, the infield will be busy tonight. Peterson, Simmons up the middle. Oliveira and Freeman on the corners. AJ's behind the plate. Swisher, Bourne, and Marquez in the outfield. Here's our first look at Aaron Altair. He started his big league hitting career with seven extra base hits. He has a total of 14 hits this year. Eight have gone for extra bases. 6 5, 215. Phillies got him in the ninth round of the draft in 2009. Started at double A, also played at triple A, 
combined 14 homers, 67 driven in. Balls, two strikes. Altair got to the big leagues when Michael Franco went to the disabled list with a wrist problem. And Franco might be done for the season for the Phillies. And that's a shame for them. He was really a difference maker in the middle of their lineup. Yeah, he was hitting third the last time we saw him. Got hit with a pitch in Arizona. Two balls, two strikes. Two nothing Atlanta. Two outs. And a shot to right. Marcakis on the run. Can't get it. It's over his head. And ricochets back toward the infield. Altair can really fly. He's on his way to third. And that's where he'll stop with two outs. His ninth extra base hit. And his second triple. Jumped off his bat and then just just off the glove of Nick Markakis. Got leather on it. And then the hard carom. And now Ryan Howard's coming up. You know all about what Ryan Howard does to the Braves. Yeah, it doesn't matter that he's old for his last 17. The Braves are in town and that perks him up. Shift is on. He swings at the first pitch and a roller to Simmons ends the inning. No runs, two hits, and Altair left stranded at third. Williams Perez got out of the first. He leads to nothing. Just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. It's got to start just what the doctor ordered. Joe, 2 nothing, a Freeman homer, and Perez got out of the first. And let's hope everybody loosens up, goes up to the plate relaxed, and has a good night offensively. Add on. Second inning starts with Jace Peterson, Andrelton Simmons, and then Michael Bourne. Out the way, strike one. Brian Jordan, who was back tonight on Braves Live, said he was bringing the energy. Well, already some energy. I forgot who Brian's pick to click was tonight. I didn't hear it. I'm sure it was Freddie Freeman. Probably, yep. One ball, one strike for Jace. Fouled away. Big game today in the National League. Mets beat the Nationals 8 5. Max Scherzer was, shall we say, 
less than perfect today. That's a huge win for the Mets. As this one's banged up the middle by Jace Peterson. He's got a leadoff single. There we go. Third hit allowed by Harang already tonight. Kelly Johnson hit a homer. Cespedes hit a homer. And Conforto hit a homer for New York today. Yeah, that was quite a game. And that has to be a crushing blow for Washington. That was the game they really needed to win. Scherzer pitching against Nice. They didn't. Now they got to look at Matt Harvey tomorrow. Strike to Andrelton. Hope everybody in Braves country is enjoying the Labor Day holiday. Hope you had a chance to spend it with friends and loved ones. And hope the weather where you are is as nice as it was in Philly today. Gorgeous afternoon. And a perfect night tonight. Long look at Bo Porter for Andleton Simmons on a 1 1 pitch. See if anything's on. Peterson's running. Pitch low. The throw to second is late. And Chase is in safely with a stolen base, his 12th of the year. Nice to see the Braves able to break out the running attack. They've been trailing so early and so often, any attempt to force the issue has been taken away. Right. So an opportunity to be a little more aggressive. Stole that one on Harang. Rupp has a good throwing arm. He's thrown out 37% of base stealers. They were thinking about challenging it, but no reason to. So an RBI chance for Andrelton. Or at the very least, get the ball to the right side and get Jace to third base. Try to. Try again. He's choked up on the bat. Let's see if he stays there. Right back down on the knob. Up the middle and saved at second. Long throw to first. No chance to get Simmons, who is gingerly making his way down the first base line. Did he hurt himself? Sprinting toward the first base bag. Hope not. He's had a bad ankle, remember? We'll watch him here. Lunge at the bag may have gotten him. Nice play by Hernandez to keep it on the infield and save a run. Simmons looks to be all right after his infield hit, and it was Michael Bourne who was BJ's pick to click. Was it? All right. That might be why. He's got an opportunity. Look at his numbers against Aaron Harang. Popped up. Cody Ashy foul ground is going to have plenty of room. Michael Bourne pops out of the first pitch. Aaron Harang's been around long enough to get out of a jam like this. He knows he's going to need a ground ball. Just to try and get a double play and even at the expense of a run. So Michael Bourne jumping on that first pitch played right into Harang's hands. So Perez hits first and third one out. And tried to bunt and that's back to the screen. 
Williams two for 21 this year at the plate. Smother that. The butt pushed toward Ryan Howard, and that is a fair ball. Call made at home by Doug Eddings, as it should have been. Perez is the second out. Simmons advanced second, and the top of the order, Marquecas, is coming up. That's all they were trying to do there was stay out of a double play, get another runner into scoring position. There's no attempt to get the, the squeeze going here, unless the Phillies messed it up somehow. So the Phillies will take the bat out of the hands of Nick Marquez. He'll be walked intentionally, and Harang will get after Hector Oliveira. Hector will bat with the bases loaded and two outs. It's only the second intentional pass issued by Harang this year. Really? Uh huh. Well, let's see if Oliveira can make him pay. During this long stretch of frustrating baseball for the Braves, they've hit just 183 with men in scoring position. Freeman took care of that in the first inning with a. One out home run. Now Oliveira can put a big crooked number on the scoreboard. Second time he's hit with the bases full as a brave. He's one for one. And a big swing and a miss. Got him on off speed pitches the first time around. Staying with it so far. Can't imagine how difficult this transition is for a player like Oliveira to come from Cuba, not play hardly at all, change organizations, get only a handful of the bats in the minor leagues, and now playing in the major leagues against men you've never seen before. That's his fate tonight. As Lang misfires high, ball two. I think the part you said about not playing much, the fact that he's been injured and hasn't been on the field much for the, a lot of the last two years, is more of what we're seeing here in the early going. Just trying to get some timing, a feel, and knock off the rust. As we mentioned the other day, the plan for Oliveira at the end of the season is for him to play winter ball. So we'll get some more at bats once the season ends. And hopefully, be ready to go and earn a starting job in spring training next year. Deuce is wild for Oliveira from Harang. Base is loaded. And he swings and misses. Same pitch that got him in the first is what ends the second. Harang got him loaded. Braves can't add to a 2 0 lead.
Done a lot of research. I believe the term is called bandbox. Really short fence. Great view of the city, by the way. Great fans, great food, especially cheesesteaks. But hey, when you walk up to the plate, I needed to know if the hitters were thinking about it. And if you're on the mound, do you change your game plan because the fence is short? Caught up with a few guys earlier, and they all had a different answer for me. Edwin Jackson says, I work down and away no matter what. I don't try to let it bother me. Jace Peterson says, yes, it's in the back of my mind all the time. I have to guard against overswinging and be myself. And then Hector Oliveira, who's used to playing on small fields in Cuba, said, you know what? If I hit it, it's going to go no matter what. So we'll see if he gets his first, first home run here tonight. Let's hope so, Paul. That last at bat would have been a good time for it, but whenever it comes, it'll be a good time. So Williams Perez still with a two run lead. And this is Darnell Sweeney, an infielder, outfielder, who has been very impressive since coming over from the Dodgers in the Chase Utley trade. High on base guy, very fast guy, and a Pacific Coast League All Star this year. Now he was at Oklahoma City and was leading the Pacific Coast League in stolen bases and doubles. Had 30 doubles and 32 swipes. Boy, as he takes a setup, looks a little like Chase Utley, doesn't it? Bat resting on the shoulder. Well, he made it as a second baseman at All Star team, so his work in the outfield somewhat new to him. Darnell, a college player out of the University of Central Florida in Orlando. Originally a 13th round pick three years ago by Los Angeles. And that's fought off foul. Two balls, two strikes. Nice job of waiting on that changeup. No doubt about it. New era for the Phillies. I believe it's. Carlos Ruiz and Ryan Howard, the only holdovers left from their championship club. There's that pitch missed inside. Three balls, two strikes. Good pitch inside, though, that might set up the change up again. And he got him with it. Good call, Joe. And a good delivery by Williams Perez. One away in the second inning. Here's the rest of the Phillies lineup. Sweeney bats fifth. Cody Ashy is back at third base with Michael Franco hurt. Rupp, Galvis, and Harang, the bottom part of the Phillies Academy Sports lineup. She's the man that the Braves have absolutely owned at the plate. He's only four for 36 against the Braves this year. Began the year as their third baseman. They sent him to the minor leagues to learn how to play left. And now that Franco is hurt, he's back at third base. Peterson couldn't smother that. Now she has a one-out single. Third hit against Williams Perez. Almost looked like that step right there, that left, his last step in his left foot. He was trying to get his feet right so that he could push off with his left foot, like that would give him more extension. Maybe that's his jump foot. See how short that step was? Mm -hmm. And it prevented him from getting out as far, I think, maybe knock that ball down. So one out single brings up Cameron Rupp who's coming off a mammoth month of August. He had seven of his eight home runs last month. And he's hit a home run against the Braves this year too. Big strong man out of Texas. Found back out of play into the crowd. We'll do it again, 0 and 2.
as she doesn't run much. She's 0 for 2 in the stolen base department. And Rupp couldn't stop his swing, and Williams Perez struck him out. Two down. Here's a guy the Braves can't figure out this year. No matter where he bats in the lineup, and no matter what the situation, runners on or nobody on. 429 average against Atlanta. He's hitting 265 against everybody else. <laughs> it tells you how, how much trouble the Braves have had getting him out. He and Ryan Howard get together and go over the scouting report together. <laughs> right. Just what we need. As that's cut on and miss, something off speed. Sunk out of sight, and Galvis missed it. One of those 21 hits was a homer for Galvis, who's hit six of them this year. No balls at a strike. We have seen Galvis make several circus plays at shortstop. I mean, great eye popping plays. And with all the talk, and justifiably so, for Antleton Simmons and Danny Echevarria in our division, that guy needs to be talked about too defensively. And he continues to punish the Braves. Ashy around second. He's on his way to third. He'll stop there. They're at the corners with two out. Aaron Horan coming up. High pitch out over the plate. Again, you see the response, the body language of A.J. Persinski wanting a better pitch. Galvis not missing, missing it. I, I wondered why that bus, when we came in on the train yesterday, yeah. the bus that picked us up was. Galvis transportation. <laughs> I had noticed that. Yeah. Now we we know why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Braves are in town. Galvis is smiling. 22 hits against Atlanta this year. Now Orang will try to help himself. Look at where that pitch was, though. Right in the middle of the plate. Fortunately, Aaron missed it. That's taken high. One ball, one strike. Aaron has seven hits this year. And a double. Ashy and Galvis, the Phillies runners. Two outs, Aaron Harang, the pitcher, is behind in the count. Freddie Freeman, a first inning home run, has accounted for all the offense tonight. Runner at first goes, the pitch is low and outside, no throw by Pruszynski. Now Harang gets a hit, the Phillies might be able to tie the game. His ninth steal. It's pretty gutsy in the part of the Phillies. The Braves throw him out, and then you got the pitcher leading off the next inning. Two and two. Aaron's a big guy with a bat in his hand. Six seven two sixty. Out of San Diego. Now thirty seven years old. Just missed full count with Cesar Hernandez lurking on deck. Bouncing ball up the middle. Simmons to his left has plenty of time. And that will retire the side. No runs, two hits, two left. Third inning, Freddie Freeman leads off to the Braves, who are up to nothing.
bat of Freddie Freeman. First homer, 100th homer, and our first runs tonight, courtesy of Freeman, our Toyota key play of the game. And he was hanging out, draped over the plate, making sure that he had the outside part covered if Aaron Harang ran that pitch away from him. So he was ready for it. His 16th of the year, and he has 52 RBIs. And that homer ended a seven game homerless drought by the Braves offense. As I mentioned at the time, it's 84 homers for the team. The last time the Braves had a season in which they hit fewer than 100 homers in a season was 1988. So they've got some work to do. If they're going to hit the century mark in homers this year. Third inning, Freeman, Brzezinski, and Nick Swisher are coming up. Big shift on for him. Ball one. And line to first, and Ryan Howard reached up with a big right hand. Ryan Howard get off the ground. Saved a double. Harang happy with that result. Here's AJ. He hit one deep to right. Holter was back to the fence to haul it in. And a strike. One shudders to think where the Braves would be without AJ Przinsky. What has already been a tough year offensively for this club. AJ's had a great year. 294 average popped up this time to short. That'll be easy. Two outs. AJ hitting 325 for the Braves since the 1st of July. And as you said, the Braves are trying to snap this road losing streak, trying to avoid dropping into the cellar. AJ's the hot hand behind the plate. He's going to play. Two outs. You surprised with what Nick Swisher has done? I am. I am, and I'm very happy for him, knowing how much hard work he had to put into just getting to this point to get his knees rehabbed. He had surgery on both knees in the offseason. Slow coming back. Rip toward left. And that's going to be caught, and that'll retire the side. Sweeney makes the grab. Harang, three outs on six pitches. Phillies go to work. Top of their order coming up.
Eagles night, Thursday, October 1st. Join your fellow Georgia Southern Eagles for a fun night at the ballpark, including pregame meet and greets with Georgia Southern greats and an Atlanta Braves Georgia Southern hat. Visit Braves.com slash Southern for more information. That'll be fun. First pitch driven toward right center field. That's going to get down off the bat of Cesar Hernandez. He's going to try for two and he's going to make two. He's two for two. First 31 pitches for Williams Perez. Talking about his Ford Keys tonight. His first 31 pitches, the Phillies were four for eight, but did not score because on his 32nd pitch, Aaron Harang grounded out. On his 33rd pitch, he's got a guy at second base and nobody out. We'll put a little note in the scorebook, a little dot there, so that we know that that 31 pitch mark has been passed. Let's see what Adubal Herrera does. He hit to a double play in the first inning. Way outside, one ball, no strikes. Herrera has been a terrific find for the Philadelphia Ball Club, a Rule Five selection. An infielder by trade, they've. Camped him in center field and turned him loose. And he's put up a very solid first season. And that's taken high, ball two. He's got to have some kind of good hand and eye coordination with all that he's got going on in that swing. We've talked about it all year long. His right foot, his front foot is wide open and actually laying over where you can see the sole of his shoe. Brings it back, high leg kick, bat waggle. He's got the bottom of his pants anchored under the cleats. I haven't seen that before. Ground ball to second, got his man to third base, productive out. And Altair will hit with a runner at third and one man down. Altair got into a couple of games for the Phillies last year. He had five hitless at bats. Guessing his folks were in the military. He was born in Landstuhl, Germany. Lives in Buckeye, Arizona. Ball one strike. Driven to right. Arcakis retreats. That'll be deep enough to score a run. Altair has his 10th RBI, and the Braves' lead has been cut in half. It's two to one. Nice ABC baseball there demonstrated by the Phillies. Again, their runs per game output has been very good since the All Star break. That's why they have a winning record since the break. Almost five runs a game. And the Phillies are indeed 24 and 22 since the break. Now Ryan Howard digs in. He represents the tying run, and he's our Georgia Lottery hitting the jackpot. 224 average against everybody else. Slowly hit left side. Shift was on. And Howard is out. Leadoff double and a sacrifice fly scores the first run of the night for the Phillies. And we head to the fourth inning.
Philadelphia, it's about time the Braves had a lead in the third inning or so. It's been a while since that's happened. Yeah, the third inning has been kind of a demarcation point, so the fact that they've got the lead here is a good sign. That leadoff double came back to Hunt Williams Perez, but it's about the offense now adding on, trying to get some more runs. Garrett yeah, Harang has had his troubles over an extended stretch. Let's see if the Braves can touch him up and get that run back. Fourth inning now, and Jace Peterson takes a ball outside. Ball foul. Jays had a single, a stolen base, and was left stranded. Atlanta had him loaded, although with two outs in the second inning, couldn't score. And that six out of sight, two balls and a strike. Jace Peterson's two for two. Good swing on that. Not that his first hit wasn't a good swing, but that one was right on the ball. Squared it up. Head down. Drove through it. Didn't try to pull it. Good start to his night. 114 hits for Peterson this year now. Started play at 236 overall. Edelton Simmons has an infield hit. And he had a big cut. Braves had first and third, nobody out in the second inning, didn't score. Actually loaded them up with two outs and didn't score. So they can't continue to miss those great opportunities. The key out was a foul out by Bourne on the first pitch he saw. Edwardson Simmons has hit three homers this year. Two of them have come against the Phillies. Three for eight against Aaron Harang. And low and outside, two balls at a strike. Braves have not announced their starter for tomorrow night. We will see Aaron Nola for the Phillies, one of their prized prospects. He's got a good arm. Saw him earlier this season. Taken low, three and one the count. Julio Tehran will pitch here on Wednesday night, and we're hearing whispers that David Buchanan will get the ball for the Phillies. Good hitters count, three and one. Bouncing ball, that's a fair ball down the left field line, headed for the left field corner. Peterson around second on his way to third. He's getting the green light. Peterson coming home. Throw to the plate is going to be late. He scores standing up. Andleton Simmons with a double makes it a 3-1 game. That's kind of like that play that Desmond scored on yesterday for the Nationals. All the way from first on a double down the left field line and Bo Porter never hesitated waving Jace Peterson around. Good at bat by Anderton Simmons again. 35th RBI. Good to see Bo Porter busy tonight. He's got to shake hands with Freddie Freeman now he waves home Peterson. And Michael Bourne bats. Popped out of the first pitch he saw and is 0 for 1 tonight. Oh, 
as Peterson just scored his 49th run of the season. Two balls, no strikes. In the air, shallow center field. Herrera comes on and makes the grab. And Bourne pops out for the second time in the game. Williams Perez hits with one on, one in, and one out. Williams laid down a sacrifice. Got Andrelton Simmons to second base. I think this was walked, and then Oliveira struck out to end the second inning. It got fouled away. Strike one. I saw Williams before the game, and I said, "Hey, get a couple of hits tonight." He kind of laughed, and I said, "No, oh, swing hard in case you hit it." He said, "Yeah, you never know." I was glad he's had some runs to play with for a change. He's given up five hits, but only one run so far. The offense has given him a two run lead. Williams has not won a game since coming off the disabled list. Shot to the ankle in Pittsburgh really derailed his year. One ball, one strike. And out of play foul. One and two. Two balls, two strikes. The importance of this game for Williams Perez personally obviously wants to snap his six game losing streak. But for the Braves it's really been a one two punch when it comes to quality starts this year. Julio Tehran and Shelby Miller have combined for 34 of the 62 quality starts made by the Braves this season. The rest of the staff has 28 combined. And a lot of those that belong to those other guys. Came. Some time ago. Yes. Nothing much lately. A quality start is a 450 ERA. So if there have only been 62 games of 450 or better, think of how many more have been much higher than that. Two balls, two strikes. And he's gone full to Williams Perez. Look at that. He's fouled off about four pitches. Foul ball. This went down the third baseline. Oh, as she thought about seeing if that would roll fair. Perez is only a third of the way down the line. Well, if he had let it roll back fair and then thrown it to first, Andrelton Simmons might have scored because Andrelton had hustled over there and was standing right behind him. Got him. But a good battle for Williams Perez. He's out number two, and here's Marcakis. And they have a base open. Let's see if they give Nick anything good to hit. A run on two hits, now two outs.
two and oh. I think if I'm Nick here, well, they're going to put him on, so it doesn't matter. I was going to say if they if they're going to pitch around him, then look for something off speed, something that's even off the plate a little bit, but it won't matter. Yeah, Harang took two shots at seeing if Marquez would get himself out. He didn't. And now Olivera will hit again. He must feel pretty good about pitching to Hector. So two are on, two are out. Oliver has been retired swinging on breaking balls out of the strike zone. Let's see if he looks for that. Frank pulled that one off the plate. One ball, no strikes. Yeah, I think. I mean, Rupp was out there to block it, but he was fairly lucky too in the way he caught it because it bounced up into his glove. And he had to try and backhand it. Swing and a drive. That's hammered deep toward left center field. That ball is off the wall. Here comes Marquecas around third. He's going to get waved. He's going to score standing up. And Oliveira ropes a double to the wall in left center field. A three run inning for Atlanta. And Oliveira makes it a 5 1 game. Everything away, everything soft, everything away, everything soft. Two strikeouts, and then a mistake. Fastball, letter high. And Harang actually fortunate this stayed in the ballpark. Uh, Oliveira able to tomahawk that one. Two big runs. So five RBIs for Oliveira. And that brings up Freddie Freeman. He's scalded the ball twice. Once to Ryan Howard who caught the line drive to start the third inning. Trying to hand the Phillies their fifth straight loss. The Braves are also trying to win on the road for the first time since August 2nd against these same fighting Phillies. Just tells us that this is the first time the Braves have had a four run lead in almost a month. I believe it. Feels good. There's a strike. Freddie made him throw one. Three balls and a strike. All bets are off now. Out of play. Brave star play tonight. Three games behind the Marlins. Miami was beaten today. The Brewers are playing good baseball. Brewers have been scoring a lot of runs. They scored nine today down at Marlins Park. And one nine to one. Here it's five one Atlanta. And Freeman takes a walk. First and second, two outs. Pitching carefully to Freddie Freeman, which is understandable. He's now issued his third base on balls, second of the inning. And that'll bring up A.J. Pruszynski. He's over two. 
No activity in the Phillies bullpen. So. A little more damage is. All okay. Nobody throwing. AJ kind of jammed himself last time up. But he got a good pitch to hit on the first pitch. And popped it up. Flips the bat in frustration. Galvis at short in shallow center makes the play and that will retire the side. A three run inning this time for the Braves in the fourth inning. Hector Oliveira doubles home two. Narrowly missing a home run and just to let you guys know. Yes, he has a big contract. He's very excited to be with the Braves. He's very excited to be in America. But guys, he has not seen his family in eight months. His little boy turning five just the other day, hoping to hit a home run for his son. And gosh darn it, did he come close just a few inches away. But he did drive in too. And you guys saw the smiles, teammates congratulating him. Good times. Yeah, you bet. Good sign too for the Braves offense. Which leads five to one. In the Phillies fourth Sweeney Ashy and Rupp are coming up. And a swing and a miss by Darnell Sweeney. He struck out to start the second inning for the Phillies. Pretty remarkable to see the transformation the Philadelphia Ball Club has undertaken since opening day. And really in the offseason, too. Jimmy Rollins is gone. Chase Utley is gone. Cole Hamels. Cliff Lee, I guess, has an option left that they have to pay off. I don't know if he'll be back next year or not. One would think no. But the Phillies aren't the old Phillies anymore. Ryan Howard's now the old man at 35. Everybody else in tonight's ball game, the position players, the oldest is Cameron Rupp at 26 years of age. And many baseball executives, Joe, thought that um, Ruben Amaro, who has taken a lot of heat for seeing this Philadelphia team get old before their very eyes, did a heck of a job at the deadline to transform this Phillies ball club into the youthful group we're seeing on the field now. Well Sweeney out in left field was one of the products of that deal. I beg your pardon that was uh, an L.A. deal for the right. athlete right trade. I'm sorry. But the question was going into the season was. A why didn't uh, the Phillies trade their guys in the offseason and get ready to rebuild this year. Well, maybe there wasn't any market for it. Maybe there were they were thinking that we'll be OK. Applebaum's gone. Deepman's gone. Now I'm told that the haul they got from the Rangers oh is a real good one. Some top prospects out of the Rangers organization. They got a catcher in that deal. They got an outfielder in that deal, and a 
couple of pitchers in that deal. One of them, Jared Eikhoff, who I think we're going to see in this series. Might see him down in Atlanta. I think he pitched yesterday. Two balls, two strikes. And they missed inside. Andy McPhail has come on as the, <clears throat> beg your pardon, president, baseball operations executive to be. Once Pat Gillick steps down at the end of the year, Andy McPhail will officially take over. He's in an advisory role now. And then the next logical question is, will Amaro stay as the GM? And will Pete McCannon stay as the field manager here? He's gotten rave reviews. Yeah, well, what he's done with this ball club since the All-Star break, I'd say he's got to be the front runner. He's earned it. Pete has been an interim manager several times before. Aaron's and Reds now with the Phillies. And Sweeney has struck out. There's a third strikeout for Williams Perez tonight. And the fourth inning. Off to a good start for him. He's done Sweeney twice. Talking about these youthful Phillies doesn't even count Michael Franco. He just turned 23. So I think for the Phillies, from a position player standpoint, their future is a lot brighter now than it was opening day. How Ashy fits in will be another question. He's not going to play third if Franco is here, and if Sweeney's the everyday left fielder, where does Ashy play? Back to the mound. Perez has that. And he'll flip to first for the second out. Well, if he keeps hitting, Ashy will play somewhere. He's hit 337 his last 28 games, one for two tonight. So I. I wouldn't worry about it too much if I was Cody Ashy about where I played as long as I played. Here's Rupp. Check swing, strike out, retire the Phillies catcher in the second inning. Two in the first, three in the fourth for Atlanta. The Phillies got their run in the third on a sacrifice fly from Aaron Altair. And that pitch has fooled Rupp all night long. Strike one. Up curveball. You can see it when when Williams throws that pitch from in slow motion. You, you can see his index fingers off the baseball. Williams has been economical. Given up five hits. But only one run, as you see, the one two pitch. Missed badly outside, two and two. Rupp looks one of, like one of those guys that ought to have one of those kind of padded headbands on playing rugby. You know, his ears all taped up and leading the charge. Awfully thick. 6'2, 258. Evan Gaddis like physique. Broken back. Olivera's got it. And a long throw to first in plenty of time. And how about Williams Perez? A much needed shutdown inning. He got the Phillies in order. One, two, three, and we head to the fifth.
every day. Beautiful night here in Philadelphia and the Braves lead in game one. It's 5 1 heading to the fifth inning. Nick Swisher, Chase Peterson, and Andrelton Simmons are coming up. That guy's got a long night ahead of him. He's I, I think it looked like it had been a long labor day. <laughs> it looked like to me. Man, oh man. One in the lap and one saying, Dad. I want to go hang out with the fanatic. It's their first game. You see the sign? Uh huh. And had turned that one around. They didn't have room for the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Popped up by Nick Swisher and Galveston short. He is going to have room at the cut of the outfield grass. He's got it. And there's out number one. Here. How do you take? Take you take. I need a, I need a break. You take two of them, and I'm <laughs> gonna take this. Yahoo. I'll be back in about two hours. <laughs> Doesn't that look like that? Oh. that they may have started around 7:30 this morning by going to the park. Yeah. Oh, we're going double dip over there on that bottle. I know all about that man having twins. <laughs> that is a. Great blessing but boy is it hard work Two and over count to Peterson. Aaron Harang has now given up at least four runs. In 12 of his last 14 starts. Oh, right back where it came from. Harang deflected to second. Peterson safely aboard. Let's see if Harang's all right. Sounded like hit some skin somewhere. I don't know where it got him, but it hurt. That will get their bullpen stirring. It's an infield hit for Peterson, who's three for three. <laughs> Andelson Simmons has a perfect night. He's two for two. One thing you know about Aaron Harang, unless he's really hurt, he will take the ball for you every fifth day. Yeah. He will give you everything he's got. There just may not be much left in the tank here in September for Aaron. I mean, his season is almost a mirror of what he did last year with Atlanta. Great first half, struggled in the second half. Hector Oliveira, two run hit tonight. Braves have eight hits. And pop fly foul into the seats. It's one and two. Yeah, and a couple of guys who really needed him. Chase Peterson, one for 15 on the road trip. Anderton Simmons, 0 oh for his last 19, and they're a combined five for five tonight. Swing and a miss. Simmons didn't get it. And he's out number two. Four strikeouts for Aaron to go along with three walks. And here's Bourne. Bourne's popped out twice. Pirates lost again today. The Reds beat them 3 1. Pittsburgh's had trouble beating the Reds all year, surprisingly. Pirates are now four and ten against the last place Cincinnati Reds. They have trouble beating Milwaukee. In fact, I think Pittsburgh has an awful record against the Central this year. 
They best be careful as the Cubs are nipping at their heels. The Cubs shut out St. Louis 9 0 today. Pirates are 23 and 33 in their own division. That's how you don't win the Central. They are 24 and 9 against the East. No balls, two strikes for Michael. And that was tipped and caught, and Michael Bourne is 0 for 3. Aaron Harang took a batted ball off the arm, but hung in there to get through the fifth inning, and he's trailing 5-1. by uh, this is Dominic and I got Melissa here we've got one-year-old twins and a young man over here uh, this is Mia's milk bottle here and we went the pacifier which just came out we may hear some screams here in a second but I got to know Dominic you're a huge Phillies fan how long do these guys make it <laughs> how long do these guys here, how long, how long you stay in? seven and a half that's what we're pushing for are these the twins' first game here? First game and first birthday. Fantastic, guys. I think this is sort of like the Dodgers where you show up in the third, you leave in the seventh. Whatever happens in between, if you yells some good popcorn Cracker Jack, try to survive. Hey, hey Paul, hey. ask him how much cotton candy today. <laughs> Any cotton candy here for these guys? Uh, not yet. We're actually going to get some soft pretzels. <laughs> We're going soft pretzels, a little lower on the sugar yeah. than the cotton candy. <laughs> Paul, but uh, you, this is more impressive than uh, being out on the field and being in the big leagues. I don't know how you're doing it. That's a double play right there. Supermom does it. Paul, why don't you volunteer to change a diaper while you're at it? I, those days are over for me, Chip, but I appreciate <laughs> you saying that. <laughs> what a beautiful family, though. Uh -huh. oh, congratulations. First birthday for the twins. My wife Susan and I used to say during those days, sleep is overrated. <laughs> 5 1 for Williams Perez as we head to the Phillies half of the fifth inning. Galvis, then Brian Bogusevich, who's on deck. He's going to hit for Aaron Harang. Phillies have five hits. Their only run came in the third inning on a sacrifice fly. Williams has set down six straight men. And a swing and a miss. Not that change up. Williams Perez is looking like the old Williams Perez. Is over for Aaron Harang. Five strikeouts, three walks, five runs. Eight hits.
Ryan Bogusevic. He was called up on Friday from Lehigh Valley. Had a good year going at AAA. Seventh in the International League in average. And fifth in hits. The All Star team for the IL is the postseason All Star team. And he just launched one deep into the night. A line drive home run. A pinch hit homer. Not rewarding for him. He's been in the big leagues before. I think we signed with Houston. Boy, how great. Even when the Phillies hit a home run to hear the voice of Harry Callis say it's out of here. It was a laser beam. Yeah, this was not one of those Citizen Bank Park cheapies. Deep into the seats. Fourth career pinch hit homer. And you're right, Bogusevic was with the Astros. Most recently with the Cubs in the major leagues. It was in 47 games in 2013. It would be a thrill for him. He's an Illinois kid out of Oak Lawn. Pretty good exit speed too. So it's a 5-2 game now and the top of the order is up. Cesar Hernandez. And Adubal Herrera. Ninety three pitches for Philly starter Aaron Harang. His earned run average now stands at five point zero two after five runs tonight. And that's been a recurring problem for the Phillies. Their pitching staff has been battered of late. Here to go. Yes, he did. Hernandez is out on a check swing. Perez has his fifth strikeout. I've struck out three of the last six guys. All of them on chain jumps. Last Phillies rookie to finish the season with a 300 or better batting average is Marlon Byrd. Adubel Herrera is at 301 at the moment. But is 0 for 2 tonight. A double play in the first, a ground out to Jace Peterson in the third. He had a great. Trip that concluded with uh, Boston nine for 21. Started their uh, their trip against the Mets. That pops away from AJ. So far for Williams tonight, those five strikeouts and eight big ground outs. That's huge. The one fly ball out was a sacrifice fly. Ground ball right side. Freeman's got it. Race to the bag. And Williams Perez won that race. And that retires the side. Brian Bogusevic hits a pinch hit home run that pulls the Phillies to within 5 2.
Hospital in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and that ankle might be barking a bit after he landed awkwardly at the first base bag. Maybe, but I think it was his left foot that got that got hit with a line drive. His instep. Must be all right. He's hitting his foot with his bat. I think he'll be all right. <laughs> And he'll take aim at Hector Neris, who will be the second Phillies pitcher of the ball game. Neris was called up July 7th. He's been up and down three separate times with the Phillies. 27 games at AAA. In the big leagues, he's been hammered. Nine earned runs in his last six games. Low to mid 90s fastball and a split finger pitch and a slider. It's a little bit of a Papelbon start to his stretch, hiding the ball behind his hip. And quickly 0 and 2. He didn't waste any time either. Ground ball to second. Perez got down the line in good shape. And he's up number one. We're in Philadelphia. It's trivia time. And of course, it features Ryan Howard. Since 2004, he's one of two active players with 350 or more homers and 1,300 strikeouts. Who's the other player? Hmm. A Rod? That's, that's a good call. Hamilton was another thought. Josh Hamilton? There's I would have said Adam Dunn, but he's not active. Right. Pop fly by Nick Markakis to left. And that'll be caught by Sweeney on the track. Two outs. Looking at the standings today. Starting to see some X's pile up next to teams names on the standing sheet. And those two teams are the Milwaukee Brewers and Cincinnati Reds. They have been eliminated. That stands to reason since the Cardinals have the best record in baseball. Popped up. Ryan Howard is there. Very easy inning. Three outs on six pitches in the sixth. 5-2 Atlanta in game one. Big game in the National League. Mets and Nationals. David Wright in the seventh inning with a big hit. Gave the Mets a lead they would not relinquish. Cespedes has had a big day. Joe Kelly Johnson had a big day. And New York on the road wins a huge game. 
against the second place Washington club. Mets continue to hit. That's been uh, carrying them more so than their pitching in recent days and they did it today coming from behind to win that one. So they build their lead back to five games over Washington. Tomorrow it'll be Matt Harvey. And so much tension for New York the last 48 hours or so. And Terry Collins didn't sugarcoat it down in Miami. He said Matt Harvey on Tuesday will be making the biggest start of his career. As he approaches that very controversial innings limit. As Altair gets hit by a pitch to start the home sixth. This they've got to keep a close eye on Williams this inning. You saw that wince at the end of last inning when he covered first, and he was the first batter of the inning. Six pitch inning. You know, he didn't have a whole lot of time to rest up, and now he hits the first batter. Right on the elbow. And here's Ryan Howard, who's been aggressive early in the count and has bounced out short twice. That's the ninth batter he's hit this year. That might lead the team. Well, he's tried to pitch inside a lot more. I don't know yeah. if that pitch was by design or by accident. But that was something that was noticeably absent after the injury in Pittsburgh. Fly ball foul out of play. Ties him with Tehran. We'll pitch here on Wednesday night. Braves will announce their starter for tomorrow night after tonight's game. Always dangerous with Ryan Howard in the box. And <laughs> gets hit on the leg with a pickoff throw. Freddie missed that. <laughs> Everybody's laughing about yeah. that. One Sam Well, first base coach, is cracking up. <laughs> and hit him on the shoe. Ryan Howard's career numbers against Atlanta coming into play tonight. 168 games, 290 average, 50 home runs, 147 RBIs. It's a good season. Does not like to be crowded. You can tie him up inside. But if you go out there, be you careful. You have to go well off the plate. One and two count. If you want to use your changeup that's been so good tonight, you better first do something inside to set it up. Howard is 0 for his last 13 at the plate. And a good try. Missed down and away. Two balls, two strikes. 21 homers for Howard. Nine seasons of 20 or more homers. Second most in the history of the Phillies. Mike Schmidt did that 14 times here. 2 2 count. Mike Sch Schmidt played in. Let me start over. I, I think I'll tell it later. That third baseman. Yeah, that guy. He played in a pretty good hitter's ballpark, but imagine if he had played over here. There it is. Hole number, number 20. 
Thank God he didn't play in San Diego. Yeah. We have real problems. 2-2 two -two pitch. Got him. Howard didn't get it down and in. Williams and AJ set that sequence up real nice. And Altair is still at first with one out. Six strikeouts. Two of them have come on sequences with Darnell Sweeney. Both of them swinging to the Phillies left fielder. It's the most strikeouts he's had in a major league game since May 25th at Los Angeles. And fans seven. But for the Braves, this is hugely important to see Perez pitching like this. And we've talked a lot about the lack of progress at times from some of the young Braves starters. In fact, regression has been used a time or two as the runner goes at first. And that ball's hit high in the air toward left. Swisher back up against the fence has room. Altair has to re tag and he slides back in at first safely with the second out. That was very close. So this is something upon which Williams Perez can build for his final four or five starts one would think. Yeah we've been talking about taking a step forward and he certainly has but it's almost more like a step back to what he was before he got hurt. He's had better command tonight and he's had an excellent change up. Action begins in the Braves bullpen. If Perez can get through six tonight, he's got Cody Ashey up there. And this one served toward left. Swisher on the run. He's got plenty of room. And that will retire the side. We survived the sixth inning somehow. 5 2 Atlanta leads. Is away Thursday, September 10th. Tickets 20 bucks with $10 of added value included. And you'll get to sit in the new college section. And on Thursday, if you're here early, you'll get a Julio Tehran bobblehead. Students also get to run the bases after the game. Don't miss out on these special nights at Turner Field. Go to Braves.com slash college. Neris versus Freeman. It was impressive. Three quick outs in the sixth. Now an even count for the Braves first baseman who's homered tonight his 16th of the year. He's got a shot to get to 20 home runs. Remember he missed about a quarter of the season. With the wrist injury and then the oblique problem. And 
Ground ball into the shift. From shallow right, Freeman is thrown out at first. One down. Four up, four down for Maris. And here's AJ. AJ's flied out and popped out twice. Already an eventful road trip for Pruszynski. He's passed Bill Dickey on the all-time hits list for a catcher. And now AJ's only 30 hits away from 2,000 as a big league hitter. He's jammed himself the last two times up at those pop-ups, so they're staying in on him, hoping he'll do the same. Now away. No active catcher has had more games behind the plate than A.J. Brzezinski. Tonight's game number 1,857 behind the dish. And he pops another one up, hoping it'll reach the stands, but Ashy is slowing and on the grass. He's got it, and Brzezinski has popped out four times tonight. News and notes around the major leagues. Key matchups. Told you about the Mets and the Nationals. Cubs and Cardinals. Can the Cubs catch the Pirates and host a wild card game? That's what they're hoping. And Minnesota. They haven't been in the playoffs in a long time. They've got a shot this year. Got to go to Kansas City, though, to keep those hopes alive. That'll be tough. Royals' magic number at the start of play tonight is 15. Twins are only a game and a half behind Texas in the wild card race. The Los Angeles Angels play the Dodgers tonight. The Angels are only two and a half games out of the wild card. They've got to try to beat Zach Greinke tonight. Dodgers are rolling. They've won 11 of 13 games. In their season, Joe may have turned when Clayton Kershaw said it's time to panic. Uh -huh. It's got beat today 6 1 in Arizona looks like it's wait till next year for San Francisco too many injuries for the Giants in 2015 that Kane never really returned to form either and a swing and a miss two innings Harris yeah, six up six down and we stretch 5 2 Atlanta in front. It with the Braves country grab bag October 2nd against the Cardinals along with the game ticket you'll get to choose one of over 25 Braves promo items to take home as a souvenir go to Braves.com slash grab bag for more info and to purchase your tickets don't forget that'll be the first time Jason Hayward comes back to Atlanta as a member of the Cardinals and 
morning. You figure the Redbirds won't be arresting the horses. That's right around the time teams try to tune up and get ready for a long postseason run. Final week of the regular season. You wouldn't expect to see their number one and two starter, but you probably would see the number three guy on uh, Friday, followed by the rest of the rotation. But yeah, I think you probably see the guys getting their rest before they come to Atlanta. Cardinals have a great chance to set a team record for wins this season. They lost today at 87 and 50. So 25 games left. If Cardinals go 13 and 12. Remember, this is a team that's winning at a 64% clip. If they play a game over 500, they still win 100 games this year. It's been a great season for them. And Adam Wainwright, by the way, is starting to throw off the mound already. Uh, it's just impossible to me. Pretty amazing. And if he comes back, like they need him, that'd be a great story, though, for the Cardinals as Cameron Rupp faces Perez in the seventh. And he struck him out looking. Williams Perez is a man on a mission tonight. That's seven strikeouts. And he's gotten her up twice, one away. Did this one with a fastball. Late movement, coming back to the plate, but not to the middle of the plate. Now this is the hitter. And Roger McDowell out for a chat. Jeff Francoeur's grabbed a bat. He'll pinch it next. Alvis has singled, stolen a base, and struck out. He's 22 for 51 now against the Braves this year. He has set down 13 of the last 15. And he's working for him. Confidence is a wonderful thing. I mean, he's just getting the sign and getting after it. One ball, two strikes. Popped him up. Had him off stride. Simmons a little stumble at short. But he's all right, it appears. Swisher makes the grab. There's out number two. Paul, interesting time for Roger McDowell to go to the mound. One out and the eighth place hitter up. Yeah, you're right. Those are my favorite mound visits in baseball. And that's where the pitching coach usually just comes out and tells you how good you are. He says, hey, I just want to let you know you're throwing the ball great. And I'm giving you a breather. You're up around. 100 pitches and I just want to tell you to keep going those are my absolute favorite ones and that's what my guess is what happened and gave the bullpen a little break and probably found out if he needed any uh, suggestions for wedding gifts as well <laughs> candlesticks are always nice right there you go Eric Kratz it's is Eric Kratz I should say is hitting not Jeff Francoeur now Jeff was called back Kratz was a September call up. Philly signed him as a minor league free agent after the Mariners released him in mid July. He started the year with the Royals. Designated for assignment June 11th. Boston claimed him on waivers. They DFA'd him. Seattle signed him. Then made his way to the Phillies, where he previously played 2011, 12, and 13. Between Kratz and Schmidt, you could really mess up. So watch yourself. Round ball to short, big hop. Simmons has it. And 
that is that. Williams Perez, welcome back. Where have you been? Seven innings of two on ball tonight. Leads at 5 2. It had a really needed that from him, and as the starter, he earns our Sun Trust save of the game. Uh, I'm just so happy for him after all the rough outings he's had and short outings he's had, including that last stint he had against uh, Miami. Six runs, only four were earned in five innings, and tonight he is dealing no walks. Got through those first 30 pitches without any runs being scored, and 13, I think it was. 15 out of his last 17 he set down. I hope he goes one more inning. He was getting a few handshakes and one there from Nick Swisher, so we'll see if he continues on. And boy, for a staff that needed someone other than Julio Tehran and Shelby Miller to pitch well, Perez did exactly that. Here's Jean Marc Gomez, 58 appearances for the Phillies right hander, and he's been good in relief this year. Excellent ERA. Big tall guy. Low 90s slider and a change up. Sharply hit to second, and one pitch takes care of Jace Peterson here in the eighth inning. Talked a lot about the Phillies and their starting issues, and they've got them. Certainly the trade of Cole Hamels is a big blow. Cliff Lee still injured. Aaron Harang, hot start, fading in the second half. The Phillies bullpen has not been a problem for Ryan Sandberg and Pete McCannon. Their pen ERA is about 1.6 runs per game better than their starting staff this year. They've gotten quality work out of their relief core. They feel very good about Ken Giles as their ninth inning man. Can't pitch any better than Neris did tonight. And we've got some other live arms in relief. And that's something around which the Phillies can build as they prepare for 2016 as well. Another hard hit ball tonight for Jace Peterson. Unfortunately, he's right at Hernandez, but he's looked good tonight. Three for four. Anderson has two hits. Sixth three hit game for Jace. Last on August 26th. And that's driven down the right field line. That ball is foul. And it's nothing in two. And reaching around behind his neck.
I don't think Anderson's real comfortable right now. I don't know if he had a little stinger on that swing and follow through on the foul ball. I don't think his ankle feels all that good. Remember he hit the back early in the game. Started after that pop fly a moment ago and stopped suddenly. And then after the swing, reaching around back of his neck. That was the swing, and then when he got to first, then he kind of grabbed the back of his neck and was rotating his shoulder. But that's going to make everything feel better. A base hit with one out. So Anderson has a three hit game. He's got four of those. He also has two four hit games this season. And that'll bring up Michael Bourne, who's looking for his first hit. Braves have nine of them tonight. And it outscored the Phillies 5 2 as we hit in the eighth. Michael struck out three of his last five at bats going back to yesterday. And in between a pop up and a fly out. His game is staying on top of the baseball and hitting line drives. And not trying to lift. The sooner he can get back to that which he's good at. The sooner he's going to have a few more hits in his pocket. Rip toward right. Altair going back, leaping grab on the warning track. Simmons is going to have to re-tag, but he's going to be doubled up. What a grab by Altair in right field, reaching up to rob Michael Bourne. More tough luck for Michael. He did get on top of that one, squared it up. One enough. Reaching up at the apex of his leap, and that robs Bourne and sends us to the home eight. Performs after the game Thursday, October 1st. It's a free post game concert brought to you by Coca Cola and Delta Airlines. The edge tickets now at Braves.com slash concerts. Fun night so far for the Braves. William Perez with seven brilliant innings. Two runs, no walks, seven strikeouts. And now the Braves go to the bullpen. Chip, let's face it, there haven't been too many opportunities lately for the Braves to get into the late innings and figure out how they're going to use their bullpen. The other night, Freddy Gonzalez didn't want to use anybody else with the lead other than Jose Vis or, uh, Adro Arodis Vizcaino. So tonight, instead in the eighth inning, it's going to be Matt Marksbury. And while this is the 19th outing for Matt, this is a lot of responsibility, something he hasn't really been given before. 
He's going to be facing the top of their order. And the key here, especially with Howard lingering there, the fourth batter of the inning, don't walk anybody. Make them put it in play. Got a three run lead. First pitch swing popped up by Cesar Hernandez straight away center. And there's an excellent start. Hernandez, the switch hitter, retired. He's two for four now. And there's out number one. Great start. One pitch, one out. Odubel Herrera is the hitter. He's 0 for 3. Managers will tell you all they can do is put players in situations where they think they can best succeed. We know of Marksbury's relief troubles at times this year. One area where the numbers say he's been very good is his work against left handed batters. Marksbury has seen 38 left handed hitters. They have only six hits against him, a 158 average. Let's see if that holds here with. Herrera in the box and he was backing away from strike one. Line to short. There's an easy out two way. Now right hand hitter Aaron Altair who made a great catch just a moment ago. Sure did. You saw the troubles format against the righties. 414 is the opponent's average. And that's the way Altair hits. 5-2 Atlanta, bases empty in the eighth. Ryan Howard waits on deck. Rip toward left. And a couple of rockets were handled. Yeah, doesn't matter, they were out. <laughs> they were out. Three up, three down. Hadaway, Matt. He protects a 5 2 lead. Delta Airlines and your local Ford dealer. We head to the ninth inning. Look at this. Braves are three outs away from snapping a 12 game losing streak. And it's time for our AT&T Uber's trivia question. Let's snap our losing streak. See if we can answer it correctly. Since 2004, Ryan Howard's one of two active players with 350 or better homers and 1,300 strikeouts. Name the other player. You going with A-Rod? I'm going to go with A-Rod. Okay, I'm going to go with um, Josh Hamilton. No kidding. I didn't think he had that many strikeouts. Me neither. What a hitter, Miguel Cabrera. As we take a look at Colton Murray, you talk about impressive, eye popping numbers. This guy had a terrific year working for the Phillies. 
In 10 August games for Lehigh Valley, one earned run in 15 and two thirds innings, five hits and 49 at bats, a 102 batting average. And Siriaco tried to bunt, popped it straight up. Fastball curveball for Murray, 92 to 95 on the fastball. One pitch, one out. He's got the glove tap working too. In fact, it's double tap. Watch him as he begins his windup. Colton Murray. 13th round pick four years ago out of Overland Park, Kansas. And he attended the University of Kansas. Another pitcher born and bred to pitch in relief. He started only two minor league games coming into this season, and those two games were last year. Trying to get his innings up a bit. Averaged over a strikeout per innings pitched in the minor leagues. Whip of about 1.3. A few walks mixed in. Like a big downer hook. That one got away from him. Tried to overthrow it. Big league debut came September 2nd at New York. He gave up a homer, struck out two men. And a fly ball left. Pretty well hit. That ball is dropped in the corner. Nick Marquette is on his way to second base. Ball gets away, but no further advance. Sweeney had some trouble. Ball was tailing away from him. Marquette is aboard for a fourth time tonight. Two balls in play, two walks. It's almost like this ball got to the wall and made a left turn. It was a curveball, high, and you can see Sweeney running right along the edge of the wall, trying to chase it as it was slicing away from him. Two more hits from Arcacus in his 1500th big league game. Both of them doubles. And here's Oliveira. One of the big hits in the ball game came in the fourth. His two run double with two outs broke the game open for Atlanta. And he takes low ball one. Yeah, that was the big hit of the night. Last road win for the Braves August 2nd against these Phillies. Time for their first win on the road trip after being swept in Washington. Even count. Swing and a high fly ball left. Sweeney going back at the track, at the wall. Hector Alvarez, first big league homer, has come in Philadelphia. He got fooled on that a little bit too, Chip, but so strong that it it still jumped. First major league homer. A little icing. Curveball too. He backed up the first one with another one, and Hector didn't flinch on that one. Well, you heard Paul Bird report earlier that Hector Oliveira's young son was hoping he'd see his dad hit a home run on his birthday. Well, the gift came a few days late, and <laughs> finally. Hector Oliveira gets greeted by his teammates. His first major league home run and a four RBI night to make it a 7 2 Atlanta game. They must have been giving him the silent treatment. No one 
and patting him on the back. Taking all his gear off. What's going on? Okay. <laughs> and then yeah. he got ambushed. Yeah. <laughs> they sure celebrate home runs differently in the uh -huh. States, huh? What a night. Yeah. Good for him. So Hector Oliveira with a two extra base hit game. Six big league games, seven RBIs. <laughs> I, don't I don't know what kind of swing that was from Freddie, but I'm not sure he knew either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fighting it off, and then he's like. <laughs> he was hoping the pitcher was laughing. Two balls, two strikes. After the onslaught of the Nationals in Washington, Braves had a very comfortable train ride to Philadelphia last night. And Freddie Freeman broke the ice with a two run homer. Williams Perez made that stand up. De Oliveira with four RBIs in the game breaks it open. And Atlanta is rolling seven to two. Into the shift, and Freeman's going to be the second out. And AJ Pruszynski's coming up. Last time the Braves scored as many as seven runs in a game was August 22nd at Chicago, and they got beat nine to seven in that one. AJ's hit it in the air four times. Nothing to show for it. Big contribution was helping Williams Perez navigate seven strong innings tonight. And a shot the other way. There you go, AJ. 29 hits now from 2000. An opposite field single. Third hit of the frame for Atlanta. See if Nick can get in the hit column. He and Michael Bourne, the only Braves regulars who don't have a hit tonight. Atlanta has 12 of them. And that's into the second deck. Wow, what a catch. Even Swisher saw that. Great grab. And a sizzling line drive, and the fan reached up with one hand. Bang, made the grab. <laughs> Isn't it refreshing when you see players get it? Mm -hmm. It is. Nick enjoys himself. So I'm give. William Sprez that big hug when he learned that he wasn't going back out there. He appreciated his effort tonight. And all that enthusiasm, all that rah rah stuff that Nick does, that's not fake. That's who he is. That's what he is. And when you're playing as well as he is playing. It's even more fun to see and hear. It's really been a big lift in that Braves clubhouse. The other night, after Atlanta lost in such heartbreaking fashion to the Nationals, Nick was at the top of the dugout stairs, giving guys high fives, encouraging them, pats on the back, saying, Hey, we got beat, but we played the game the right way. And, you know, that was appreciated. Bouncing ball to Howard, he snares that. And that'll send us to the bottom of the ninth inning. Hector Oliveira's had a huge night. His first major league homer. He's knocked in four runs tonight. No silent treatment for the young Braves third baseman as we look for the final three outs.
Very out of market game live on more than 400 supported devices. Real time highlights, live look ins, pitch tracking widgets, and more. Go to MLB.tv today. Fun night in Philadelphia tonight. Braves are three outs away from snapping a 12 game losing streak. Williams Perez started it. Mark Sperrier scored a sitting of relief. Now Vizcaino is on to pitch tonight. As we promised you earlier tonight, we've selected the Data Strong fan photo of the game. Tweet your strongest fan photo to hashtag South Data Strong Fan for your chance to be featured in an upcoming broadcast. It's brought to you by T Mobile. Thank you, Olivia, for sending that. Rodis Vizcaino tried to go two innings the other night to. Hold down that win for the Braves and was one out away from getting it done. But Matt then Decker got that pinch hit single to tie it up. Four out of five and save opportunities. Love the move then still love the move. Love the fact that Freddie was thinking outside the box. Trying to get. This kind of through the real nasty part of the Nationals lineup. Just have to tip your cap to Den Decker. Who had the two out pinch hit single to tie it up a game that Washington won in 10 innings. He'll face Ryan Howard with a big lead. Bottom of the nine o'clock hour in Philly. 7 2 Atlanta. This is not a save situation as defined by the rules, but it is definitely a save situation where the Braves are concerned. You bet. Out of play by Howard. Two balls and one strike. Williams Perez in line for his first victory since June 20th. Remember, he started 4 0. Now we'll see the test for Vizcaino. It's not a safe situation as you said. We'll see how Chris Ben Sharpie is and how he comes back from that two inning outing a couple of days ago. Ripped into right, but right at Marcakis. A sinking line drive. There's the first out. Sweeney's 0 for 3. Williams Perez struck him out twice. Strike one. Out of the way, get ahead, make him swing it. Swing and a miss. That ball was missed badly by Sweeney. He struck out for a third time, and the Braves are an out away. And the final hope for the Phillies is Cody Ashey here in the ninth. One more out, Aaron Harang will fall to 1 and 12 in his last 16 starts. Williams Perez trying to get to 5 and 6. One ball, no strikes for Ashy, who had a second inning single tonight.
Good life on his fastball again tonight. Just trying to attack the zone and not mess around too much. Now we're a strike away. It's two and two. If he gets this out, if it, you know, if you want to break out the Braves win, Braves win, cry again, but I wouldn't mind it if he did. Foul back. It's been a long time since we've shaken hands. August 24th was the date of the last Braves win when they beat the Rockies at home 5 3. Last road win for Atlanta here in Philly, August 2nd. Just barely missed. Full count. Strike three, and that's your ball game. Look at the Braves dugout. Woohoo! At long last, the streak is over. Atlanta's 12 game run of frustration ends in Philadelphia. Look at AJ. Hands held high. <laughs> Atlanta. Yes, knocks off the Phillies by a final score of seven to two. That celebration is a long time in coming, and the pressure is off. Atlanta wins 7-2 in game one of the series. Big night for Hector Oliveira.